Welcome to the Hanford Dixon Show with the top dog. Boo, boo. I'm Gabriella Cruz. We're feeling good in studio today, Hanford. Happy uh, Victory Monday. I am feeling good today. And you know when I'm feeling good, sometimes I like to hit a couple of verses of my song. So <laughs> some people say I'm no good, crazy as can be. I get drunk in the morning, I get stoned in the afternoon, but I ain't asking nobody for nothing. If I can't get it on my own, if you don't like the way I'm living, leave this short-haired country boy alone. I won't say the God at the end because they cut me off, Gabby. They cut me <laughs> off. That'll tell you I'm in a good mood today. I How know. are you doing? Well, we've been cutting you off only because you have a limit now. <laughs> we, de we decided you can only drop like four GDs instead of ten so, uh, per show. So tell me, are you in a good mood? I'm, I'm feeling good. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. I'm feeling awesome. Listen, I was sick all week, and then that Browns win just turned it all around. Wow. I mean, to go Ravens and then Steelers, that's a huge divisional wins and huge for our whole city. I mean, come on. Well, I tell you, Gabby, we'll take it any way we can get it. Any way we can get that W, we would take it. wasn't pretty, but we're going to talk about it because you're going to – well, we got some great – people here today right i know that we will talk about it real quick before we bring on our guests because we really have a full house today uh i do want to say those are some pretty cool kicks you have on today hanford has these uh <laughs> orange bright orange shoes on i know you didn't get those yourself who gave the browns gave you those had to well you know the you have to give the equipment manager over there a shout out because what he does he'll send me uh, a box of uh merchandise and in that box it's just got really all kind of cool gear uh from the cleveland browns and uh you know it's funny i was i was getting ready i was you know getting ready to come to the show this morning well i was thinking about the show and I said, well, maybe I'll wear some cool. And I went in that box and I saw that. And then I pull out this uh, great, great. Did you like my shirt too? I you did. did. You're I put those you. kicks up on the table. I want to see. I let the people on, see what. Dogs, I want to see those kicks, he, he, man. He's, 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 nice. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's the Brown's, he uh -huh. Brown's helmet is on the side of him. You Talk know? about I mean. festive. Okay, yeah. well, well, now nice. that he's in our combo, we got to introduce the, right. that Frank Stams is here. Yeah. Frankie, what do you want to be called? Frankie the Greeky? What is yeah. it? Ooh, Frankie the Greeky. Uh, that, that's that's nice. Frankie the Greek. Uh, Hammer. Okay. Bernie likes to call me Hammer. Sure. But I want to just want to say bow wow wow. <laughs> That's wow, my wow. bark. My I man. saw I yeah. saw that on a truck yesterday when I was leaving the game, and I said that I can't bark like Hanford, so but ba I can do bow wow wow. Okay, I sure. Like bow, That's wow, a little wow. bit of a throwback. Maybe that could be my nickname. We're also joined by the King Greg Pruitt is back. He's virtual with us once again. Howdy. How you guys doing? Great victory yesterday. Well, I, you have a good show. You well, you know the King gets mad if you don't. Do the whole resume? Yeah, you have, you have listen, to. Listen, I got you. 12-year NFL <laughs> vet, okay? Let's not forget that the Greg Pruitt rule was established because of his little tearaway jersey uh, back in the day from college. That became illegal thanks to that guy. He was a little shifty runner who would just tear away and race down the field. Then he spent 12 years in the NFL, obviously. Nine seasons were with the Browns. Three were with the Raiders. The King, it's always great to have him with us. Well, let me say this about Greg. Uh, I was lucky enough yesterday uh, during the game, uh, he let me sit with him and watch part of the game because again you know i have to call him the king that's the way it's frank that's the way i dress him the king so he let me sit with him and watch part of the game greg thank you big dog well everybody went when i was a kid everybody wanted to be greg pruitt yeah. number 34 yeah. i mean we all it just it was awesome watching greg yeah it, it only happened 25 years too soon <laughs> 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 hey, hey, can, hey, Greg, can we talk uh, right off the bat? Can we talk about yeah. Frank? Don't you, Frank, you have to love that attire that he's got. Oh, look at look at the shirt and the uh, hat and the glasses. Are you talking about me? Yeah. Oh, man, everything. I'm branding myself. Everybody's branding themselves these days. I was like, I got to get on board of this branding train here. All right? Uh, I know the last time I did the show, I had the dark sunglasses on. That's yeah. all anybody talked to me about was the dark what, sunglasses. You just hung over from being 
being excited over the Browns games, or is this just a look for you? This is just my look. Okay. Yeah, I figured Howard Stern, Roy Oberson, big fans of those, both those guys. And so. now it's Frankie the Greeky. <laughs> hey, we've got to take a short Whatever break, guys. We'll take, we got to take Before a short break. Before we do, can I confess? Okay, go for Yesterday, it. Yesterday, I had to confess, Frank I, and Greg, I did uh, hit a few of those Christmas ales. So, uh, nice. you know, I, yeah. it was pretty uh, good. Uh, I remember you sit with me. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll be back right after this with this whole crew. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Hanford Dixon Show. We have got, obviously, the top dog with us, and he's chipper on this Monday. In his orange shoes and everything. <laughs> and we've also got Frank Stams in studio with us. We're joined by the King, Greg Pruitt. Just going to, we got to break down this game, fellas. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, this was the Browns' fifth victory of the year where they scored the winning score in the final two minutes. And, hey, Hanford, you alluded to it earlier. Wasn't the prettiest game we've ever seen. But what a gritty group and defense, again, doing a lot of the heavy lifting. I'm really happy for DTR, too. Well, I am, too. And, and, and you know, that's the concerns I have but I, you know I want to hear uh, what Frank and Greg have to say about this thing because it again Gab you hit on it it wasn't pretty I mean I, I mean can we continue to win like this because I think we just got lucky and then when you look at it I mean Pittsburgh had a running back guys I mean come on you have to be kidding me what's this guy named uh, number 30 I mean this kid was running all over us so what uh, what do you guys think about this game I'm going to defer to Greg on that. Well, I, I thought that uh, my prediction of the game was that the Browns were better than Pittsburgh. I thought the edge when you got t teams that are close, they're very similar, especially after we lost Watson. Uh, we got two young quarterbacks uh, that you can contain, that you can give some problems to, and they depend basically on the defense. And I think our defense is better than Pittsburgh. Playing the game here – at home was a big advantage. You know, prior to the game, when I was down uh, uh, Hanford, I signed autographs uh, uh, for a lot of fans down there. And every fan I told, make sure you be as loud as you can be <laughs> when Pittsburgh got the ball. Because for young quarterbacks, when you get in defensive formations and offenses try to adjust, they do it by audible. But if you can't hear, it's bound to be a mistake here and a mistake there. And a mistake at the right time can mean uh, whether you win or lose. But I thought that the Browns defensively, they played like they played last week, like they're the top defense in the league. I thought in order for us to have a chance, we couldn't turn the ball over. So we had the one interception, which was a deflection and a great catch by the defensive back. So we corrected those things, and it gave us a chance to win. I don't think the game – was as close as it was because there was some questionable calls early in the game. We talked about what kind of start the Browns was going to get off to. I thought they got off to a great start. I thought they had a safety and was going to get the ball back, but they were sleeping in New York when they looked at the camera, so we didn't get that <laughs> great play defensively. Yeah, was that – just real quick, Greg, was that one of those situations should Stefanski have challenged right there, or was it just, you know – because it definitely it's so – Yeah, it's so early in the game, and – and if you lose it, you lose a timeout. Uh, but and then he don't have the advantage we have. When you're watching it on the screen, we, he he don't see what we see. But somebody's yeah. supposed to tell him upstairs that you should challenge that. In fact, that was a play when we scored. They tried the same thing. Well, he didn't score, or he did score. And then they, in fact, they said we didn't, and then they reversed it, and we and got. Then a he score. did challenge. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Frank? I think it all comes out in the wash on those challenges. You know, it was close. I, I, I don't think in that case New York would have overruled it. Um, but, you know, I agree with Greg. You know, I earlier in the week, I love the Browns' chances. They, went, they were a four-point favorite going into the game. And then when the news came out about Deshaun, they, they only dropped to a two-point favorite. So the smart guys... Uh, you know, like the Browns as well. And, you know, you look at the first game that they played on the road, uh, if not for some, you know, mistakes that they made. They played a lousy game offensively and were still in that game. So I thought, wow, if they just clean it up and give, you know, they got DTR a week's worth of preparation rather than the night before or the morning of – you know that you're going to get a, a different game, and 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 the Browns, uh, you know, proved us right. Uh, it's just they came out, pl played a great a game defensively, um, and offensively, you know, they you know wasn't perfect. It was sloppy, as you say, 
but they were there at the end to move the ball, get the uh, field goal. The best thing the Browns did yesterday was win the game. And, and people are like, yeah, okay, no kidding. But you know what? That That's the, the – that's a winning attitude that you take forward with you. And that's the most important thing. I remember listening to Urban Byer one time say, you know, the guy's getting better. This is down at Ohio State. He knows where to line up. And all the reporters laughed like that was silly. It's not silly. If you don't know where to line up on defense, you got a problem. And there are guys that don't know where to line up <laughs> on defense. And my point being is the 30,000-foot view is the Browns won yesterday, bottom line, and they can take that momentum going and uh, carrying with them forward because they're going to need that confidence with some of the schedule they, they play finishing this, you know, making a playoff run. Well, let me ask you guys a question. Are you guys not concerned? I mean, sure, the defense played well. I mean, the defense played well, but we're talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers. We're talking about the Steelers' offense. I mean, but the Steelers still had a guy, Jalen Warren was his name. This guy ran for 130. 29 yards, I think he did for us. He busted one 74 big 74-yard one, yeah, yeah, yeah. run. Right I mean, I, I think that was a busted defense. He got outside and uh, a very fast, so speed helped him. But except for that, uh, they pretty much contained. What impressed you the most about the Browns' defense? Held Pittsburgh to uh, uh, three yeah, fourteen I mean, on points third allowed. downs. What, yeah, what ten no points? No penalties yesterday. Right. Well, we well, have, we have one. If we don't. If we don't have have penalties, we we, got two things that we haven't mentioned, and I want to compliment those guys for that. That is, we got one of the best punters in the league. Yes, we we do. And we got one of the best field goal guys in the league. So I say, knowing that, don't do nothing stupid. You know, run your offense. If you you got to punt the ball, punt the ball. Let him put the ball down there. Let our defense uh, (laughs) defend and not have to defend on our end. And, in fact – because of the kick, and we pretty much played on Pittsburgh's side of the field, 50-yard line. Yeah. Well, let me say this about that defense. Now, I'm not disappointed in that defense. I think that defense is playing damn good right now. Yeah. I mean, they're playing together, and it's like uh, it's like it's like a virus. I think they've all caught this virus. They are just flying to the football and making play, play after play after play. And you see Miles Garrett stepping up. You see the rest of those guys on that defensive line uh, stepping up. And that secondary, I'm telling you, I don't care who. You know, I have a question about Greg Newsom because I honestly think Emerson have taken over pretty much that starting job because very seldom do you see Greg Newsom covering anybody. You'll see him a lot of the time. He's uh, he's blitzing or whatever, but. You have to give uh, that defense and that defense coordinator, I mean, you got to give them a lot of credit because they are doing what they need to do. Yeah, they are. And, and, you know, I think we all recognize they carried the day yesterday, and they needed to with a rookie quarterback. What, to me, what's different from last year to this year is their coordinator, Jim Schwartz. He's raised the level of expectation from those guys. He expects those guys to perform like they did um uh, yesterday and when and we've talked a little bit about this Hanford that's yeah. contagious you know when you see the the other you know and making when Michael Garrett starts making plays you want to make plays too you don't want to be in that film room the next day you don't want to be the weak link you don't want to be the guy they're picking on you don't want to be the guy they're running at so it's contagious contagious uh, the the linemen are the defensive linemen are getting off playing physical. The linebackers that, that allows the linebackers to run to the ball sideline to sideline. They're active, and that secondary is 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 we've talked about is one of the best, if not the best, uh, in the NFL as far as covering. Uh, it's just an outstanding defense. They've got a you know great chemistry there with all those guys. I see them. You know they're all they play well together. So. You know, and, and then and then they're a talented group. They're a very talented group. So, you know, I expect big things, and they're going to need to carry this team going forward. Yeah, and I think what's going to happen, DTR, I think he can build off of this game. I think he can build off of this oh, yeah. game because oh, yeah. cause what happened was, did you guys notice, though, toward the end of the game where Pittsburgh started sitting on a lot of the routes because we wasn't really running any routes or trying to throw the ball upfield? We was trying to throw it underneath. Did you guys notice that also? Yeah, yeah. He never he never threaded them deep. 
Yeah, no longer. So they, so they, they assumed he wasn't going to go deep, and they played up. Yeah, I saw that. And we have to, uh, we got to, because, you know, we got Amari Cooper, who I think is going to be his best weapon. This kid Moore now, it, yeah. it, he's starting to come on. I mean, he's yeah. starting to play well. And oh. did you guys see it? I, 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 I talk about this, and, you you know, I have said it all along. I like the kid they drafted, Tillman, the big kid. But uh-huh. Did you guys see Tillman the last <laughs> game hit? What was it, Boy? Whatever. It was. What's his name? The linebacker. Did you, Frank? You're laughing. Did you, did nah, you I see was it? Laughing at you, man. You, you make me laugh. Did you guys see yeah. it? Oh my goodness! What happened, what man? Oh, what happened? <laughs> He, he, he kind of blindsided him, and, and I'm t- I thought he had knocked him out. I thought it was going to be a penalty. It should have been a penalty. Uh-huh. But that's yeah. the kid with the Ravens. No. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Yeah. So, yeah, no, when your defense is playing well, then your offense, then you, those guys, you know, they come off the sidelines. They, 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 you know, they expect the offense to play well. So, you know, that type of play is contagious, and, and I think, you know, they're getting some consistent play uh, at quarterback. I know it's been a, a, a bit of a revolving door, but it, in, in in a strange way, they're getting better play this year at quarterback than they did last year. Well, will you guys tell me this before we go? I know you're going to hit me, but I, I got to get this point out. David Njoku, how many passes did he drop? Listen, we got to get this he, cat he to, like, a couple of things. Of Nothing illegal, but can we get him to, like, <laughs> eat some pancakes before the game, like, <laughs> smear all the syrup on with his hands? And so either either, either do that or eat a dozen of donuts so he comes out with some something sticky uh, on his hands. Bed, right, you know? right. You, I, you know, I, I uh, heard the broadcast or I read it. Uh, where uh, DPR is probably one of two in terms of velocity on the ball coming out of the combine. He had the second highest, if not the highest. He really put zip on the ball, and I think those guys got to adjust to that. And you got a young guy, when he gets nervous, he puts a little bit more than he have to. That's even worse. But I think the win for him, you can tell him, keep telling him he got it, he can do this, he can do that, and until he do it, He's not going to believe. So now he got something to go on. He know that he can win in this league. He know he can throw the ball in this league, and he know he can be successful. I think he's going to see a, yeah, an the, improvement from here on. The only thing he doesn't know is if David Njoku can catch his passes. <laughs> That's the only thing. <laughs> well, eventually he did. Right. <laughs> when it counted. When it counted. Yeah. Okay, fellas, yeah. great insight. we got to take one more break. We'll be back right, right. after this. Welcome back to the Hanford Dixon Show with the Top Dog. And today we've got a couple special guests in studio. We are joined by Frank Stams with his sunglasses per usual. It's a little Looking bright good. in the studio. Looking good. Thank you, my say. man. I, these yes. are my orange sunglasses. I was going to do just straight black, but I was like, no. Yeah, orange. one thing you have to know about so much. One thing you have to know about Frank, he's always a very fashionable guy. Thank you, Hanford. Okay. I mean, he's Thank always you. looking sharp there. Thank you're you. taking tips from him because you, yeah. you're rocking the orange shoes, you're rocking the orange, and you know what? Right. The king also rocking his orange. There is no off button on any of these fellas. Uh, there are just no brown right. fans hiding today. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to let your light shine on a victory Monday, back-to-back divisional wins. Just hey, call me instant on. Hey, yes. I, I have a question, guys, okay, because go for I, it. this is something I'm worried about. I am really, truly worried about this. Is this and, style of and, play sustainable? Well, I, I think one of you guys need to get to him and, and just let him know this. DTR cannot keep trying to challenge linebackers and defensive <laughs> backs. And do you guys notice him when he's running the football? He's not getting down. He's like, Taking them on head on? Is that crazy or what? And it's well, sometimes we need to learn life's valuable <laughs> lessons the hard way. You can tell children all day long that that's not healthy and good for you, but they sometimes they've got to find out for themselves. And I hope, hopefully, when that happens, it's not anything severe. I liked that one play. I think it was he pitched it to. Who, who was it? And then Tillman oh, actually came running around, the and then he ta- and then he blocked yeah. for him. I mean, uh, see, see, he, he's uh, a shifty little runner. That DTR. I, I mean, King, what do you think? I mean, oh man, I mean, when you see the interview, man, he he don't even look like a football player. <laughs> he, he, he's he not. don't have the body of a football player. <laughs> so now you understand why I'm worried. You're right. worried. I get it. Right. Right. I, I mean, if we just signed, uh, did you guys know today we signed Flacco? Saw Joe that. Flacco, yeah. yeah. We, we we signed. Good signing. Yeah, that was yeah. a good. 
that was yeah. a good sign. Because I, I, I think that's a good sign, uh, Hanford. I, you know, uh, when I came here to the Browns, Leroy Kelly was was the running back, and uh, I learned how to run inside, basically watching Leroy and listening to Leroy's advice. So, uh, I think that's a great move. I think Flacco is probably the best thing for him right now because he's been there. He's been. He's been as good as you can be at that position. So what better person to teach that guy than Flacco? And when I was in, I mean, we had Ron Bowden, uh, guys like that, that I could uh, just kind of learn from uh, as far as defensive right. back, as far as corner. What about you, Frank? Who are some of the guys? Yeah, Carl Ecker, and I don't know if you remember that name, played yeah, linebacker. Absolutely. Yeah, played uh, for the Los Angeles Rams. You know, I had some, I had some great examples. And, and, and that's, you know, we're talking leadership. Uh, yeah. And that's what the that's what the the Browns need. They need more of. They need more of that leadership. And as Greg mentioned, he's a Super Bowl uh, winner, and right. uh, you know he knows how to he knows how to take it the distance. And and you know he's a valuable uh, example piece of you know uh, right. you know right. something for uh, DTR to learn off of. Speaking of leadership, what's your analysis of Kevin Stefanski at this point in the season? I mean, we're seven and three, and I think if everyone you know we asked everyone before the season, even with Deshaun, we would have taken seven and three at this point. Well, I don't I don't always agree with uh, uh, things that he do, <laughs> but, but you do have to take your hat off to him with the problem that he's had. That we still managed to be seven and three. I, I think maybe we could have been eight or nine if they didn't rely on analytics so much. I don't agree sometimes with the uh, fourth and one or, and the personnel that they bring in to get it done. You know, like Sunday would be a good example. Uh, we eventually got in for the for the touchdown, but if they had gone the other way, where would that game have gone? And you got one yard and you got Hunt on your team. I, I just – it's almost like Hunt runs as hard as Chubb. Yeah. It's like having Chubb and then you go everybody else but Chubb. That, and so I disagree with some of the things he do, but so far it's worked for him. I mean, so. Well, the one thing I love about Kevin – and and Hanford, you we've we've met him yeah. together. Yeah, I know you've met him multiple times, but the first time, or second time that I met you him, you remember we was all sitting there. in his office, right? Yeah, yeah. Is is he consistently from day one? And this is a little bit of you know can be a, a little bit of a fault. He's always had those players' backs. Always had their players' backs. And in fact, you know, the many people come up to me and says, "God, I'm tired of him saying that it's my fault, my fault, my fault." Well, what he's deflecting from really whose fault it is, and he can't, you know, he doesn't want to pinpoint those guys out there making in press conferences who's making, you know, bad decisions, who's not, you know, coming to play. So he's he's buffering that, and you know, and and I always thought that the team wasn't mature enough. To recognize that but this team is maturing they realize what he's trying to do now and hopefully they play even harder for him because he's got he's he's got their backs I mean you know there's a huge difference between a coach that you know when players buy into a system to me that always meant is they when a coach yelled at you yeah. they he was yelling at you because he believed in you Versus a coach that's yelling at you and then dogging you out in in, in team staff meetings. So and I and I I, I, I would think Savansky is not so defensive of his players in some of those meetings though. <laughs> some of the Monday meetings. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say he was a hundred percent. Well, well, I'll, I'll tell you guys this. I never will forget this. I remember one meeting we had, and, and I, I don't know. I'm I'm sure you've heard it before, but Marty Schottenheimer was the head coach. And uh, Marty came in the meeting, all the players. You know how you, you guys know how we meet as a group. Yeah. We start yeah. everything off after a game. And, and then you break it up into offense, defense. But uh, Marty came in that meeting, and he said, everybody out of here except Hanford Dixon. <laughs> Dang. And I was like, damn, when the word. Wow. I was like, I, I, I knew right away, right away I was in trouble. I mean, I just knew right away. I don't know what I 
I, at that moment, I didn't know what I did, but I know I did something. And uh, but you're right, these coaches. Wait, wait, well, well, what I, did you do? <laughs> right. Well, we won't, I've we won't, we part. won't talk about right. that. We'll leave it. We'll just leave it right there. Okay. That's for we'll the just, next episode. We'll just leave it right there. That's, yeah. the, that's the next episode. You're exactly right. right. But I, you know, I, you talk about Stefanski. You know, I was, I get upset with them sometimes of some of the play calling. Yeah. And, no, he's not perfect. He'll be the first one to admit that. Well, yeah, he's made a lot of mistakes. Well, can somebody tell me what does uh, who is what's the offensive coordinator's name? Of Van Pelt. Uh, Van Pelt. What the hell is right. Van Pelt's job? Would somebody tell me that? <laughs> King, maybe, right. maybe you and Frank can tell me what's his job. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know we had offensive coordinator. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I thought it was Stefanski. Yeah, I mean he's sitting <laughs> over there, and he, you know how Stefanski have all the plays on his sheet and all this. Yeah, right. You yeah. would think right. now Van Pelt is the offensive coordinator. You would mm-hmm. think that he would have a sheet or something in his hand, and he just walks up and down the sideline. As soon as the quarterback comes off, he'll pat him on the back or something. But I'm like, what is this guy's job? What the hell is he doing? I, you, I have I no idea. On, I think it's all on that sheet. I think that when they put that paper, that little clipboard together, that's what they he follows. I think <laughs> – Van yeah. Pelt is gone after that. King, this, I have to go ahead, Frank. No, this game's too cerebral for yeah, me yeah. Anyway, today. I mean, I, you know, I had coach. I came off and they're spitting in my face, yelling at me, <laughs> screaming at me. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. now today everything's they're analytics. To hurt and, their you know, look, look at the. Let's go look at some film. You know, see how you're doing, how you're feeling. Oh, you know, it's uh, it's it's ridiculous. Oh, that, are you calling this generation a little soft? Yeah, well, ain't no question. They no, soft. the game is softer. The game yeah. is softer than when we played. Yeah, that's true. You guys played without all the adequate equipment. At yeah, one point. yeah. They, were, they were shooting us up with horse liniment before the game. <laughs> Every once in a while, I neigh in my sleep. Yeah. King. My wife calls me Mr. Ed sometimes. There's a nice nickname for me. We'll Greg, add it to the list. Greg, quick question. Would you like to see a little bit more of Strong, the yes. running back? Yes, I think uh, they got to get at least 30 carries between those backs uh, you know for me as a back one carry two carry three carry it's just hard that you lucky if you are effective in just three carries in a game here's the problem that the run game now pittsburgh figured out a way to stop it right i mean that we didn't run the ball that great yesterday so right. now maybe you know in in there are no secrets in the nfl uh and denver's looking at that and yeah. this is going to be a tough game coming up, going to Denver. Yeah. A really tough game. I don't know. You guys, I know you saw the way, playing well. the way they won last night. That was ridiculous. They, the yeah. way they came back and won that game. And they're winning. And that, that's it's going to be a challenge. But, uh, you know, I, I don't want to predict how many games they're going. Because I, I, I see the schedule, and I think we've got a path to 11 wins. Easy. I'm not we sure this is going to be one of them, though, coming up. Yeah. But but you look at the on the road game. That's gonna, you know, Houston upset somebody. Uh, on the road is 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 where I have my question mark. I, I think that uh, especially because of the quarterback. As we go on, maybe he can adjust to that. But I just playing at home. I played at home a lot better than I played on the road. Yeah, no, I agree. Houston's a problem. Yeah. The, you know, the game that I see on the road that's winnable, certainly winnable, <laughs> is the Rams. Well, that's why that's why I disagree with both of you guys, because Gabby, you could take it away after this, because the top dog played well on the road and at home. Oh, yeah. the top dog. Because you had, that's he because you, a game. It yeah. you had all those fans on the road that you didn't want to disappoint. Hey, 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 top, top, hey, top dog. When we at home with Lamb Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Take it away, Gam. Take it away. All Hurry right. up. We've, we've got one more break before we're going to bring in JT of the Montrose Auto Group and look ahead to this Broncos game right after this. <laughs> Welcome back to the Hanford Dixon Show with the top dog and all of our favorite friends. We've got Frank Stams in studios, and we're joined, of course, by John Thompson of Montrose Auto Group. Yay, Glad to big be back, dog. Gabby. Big My dog. voice is kind of gone but after <laughs> screaming at the TV yesterday, but... Yeah, I'm glad to be back. Both. Another win. It was a lot of fun yesterday. Yes. Um. So you were at the game, or no? You said you were screaming I, at the TV because you were sick this week. Yeah. Like yep, me. Just not feeling 100 percent with the way the weather was. Mm-hmm. Why go out there and, uh, you know, test it? But yesterday <laughs> was 
I, I, I thought I was going to have a heart attack a few times. Well, that you is know. the recurring theme with this team. You have to make, yeah. check with your doctor to make sure that you are <laughs> safe enough to watch. But I like JT plays hurt. Yeah, you know exactly. What, you know what the problem is. You didn't. Uh, did you have a pop yesterday no. while you watched the game? See, that's no, the problem. I, I, you, you I did not. You, you need to have uh, a pop while you're watching the game, and uh, that will uh, cure anything that you have going on. It's a, a make pop? you. I guarantee you to make you feel better. A pop or a Christmas ale? Because you were just uh, talking about well, all your. I think that that's code for he, Christmas oh, ale, Gavin. Right. He, right over he, my head. He understands what I'm uh, picking he, up. What you're putting he, down. And Frank, I know you understand. <laughs> yeah. I don't even yeah, have to just watching the dynamic. Who's gonna get it first? Right. Now, the, the one thing I can tell you that kind of put me at ease is there for the first time in a very long time, I actually feel confident. Like, we have a nice a winning mentality. mentality. And I right. know how, for a long time, this team has not really had that as a fan, yes. that sink in. But after that game against Baltimore, that game against San Francisco, where, you know, we pulled out these wins— and yesterday you felt that you felt it in and throughout, um, you know, yeah, you know, Jalen Warren busts out that 74 yard run and it, you, your heart starts pounding a little bit more and DTRs new, everything is, you know, out to the sidelines and, and quick passes. Um, but it, there was just this underlying confidence that I felt for the first time. I don't know about you, but what you felt. Well, I agree with you because I, you know, I always say it and I said it several times on the show. You guys have heard me. You expect to win. You expect to win. Usually if you expect to win, you find a way to win. And I think that's where they uh, are right now. And even with the DTR, because if you listen during the press conference of Stefanski, mm -hmm. he said on more than one occasion that this kid doesn't lack any confidence. He said this kid is uh, just feels like he uh, a lot can of go out a lot of months. He can go yeah. out and get it done, and uh, you can. And I said before, even watching him, even though you know preseason is totally different from the regular season. I mean, obviously, um, we realized that because when when he went out and he played against the Baltimore Ravens, he was just overmatched. His eyes was probably. Uh, huge, you yeah, know, no looking prep, at nothing. right, and, and and he wasn't ready to play. And I think we, uh, Frank, we gave him a whole week of preparation. Right, gave him a chance to um, get it together, and uh, it showed. Sure, he wasn't uh, he wasn't great, but he wasn't bad. But he was good enough to win along with that defense. Yeah, no, and that's the key. You met preparation. I mean, there's a million ways to win in the NFL, but there's one sure way to lose, and that's not be prepared. And I think you saw a team that was, even the defense, and that was a gut punch the last time when Deshaun didn't show up, uh, wasn't able to play uh, against the Ravens. So they were, there were some question marks on that defense, but they, you know, they had all, as JT was saying, they had a week's worth of preparation. That makes a, a world of difference. Greg mentioned that you're at home, uh, you know, he's got a game under his belt. So the, the stars were aligned for them to play that game yesterday. Yep. Do you think we should stick with DTR moving forward? What are your thoughts? Uh, my, my opinion as a fan, he, he's only got room to grow. Uh, you know, um, give him another week of practice, throwing downfield. I think that's one area that Stefanski really protected him. He didn't put him in a bad position to, you know, let these – their aggressive, you know – Defensive end, Watt and uh, Highsmith get at him. You know, everything was quick. And, and, I, and that was that was smart by him. And I think that's a great point by JT making that he's got room to grow. His why, So the question was, was it PJ or was it D DTR? Yeah. And why I think they went with DTR because of his, his ceiling. His ceiling. PJ is a, a great quarterback. You know, I think anybody who plays in the NFL is is a great football player. But, it, but PJ's, you know... DTR may have not be where PGA is now as far as, you know, running the offense, creating excitement, making plays, but where he can get, in my opinion, and I think the, the opinion of the, the staff is much higher than PJ. And that's why they've got a lot, that game yesterday, there was a lot at stake yep. there. And Big there time. continues Big to be time. a lot at stake. How was he going to perform? Because they're looking at, this is a playoff team. And they need to get him in the playoffs. And this is the whole reason bringing Joe Flacco in is, you know, P.J. was a stopgap guy. DTR is a guy 
that's going to take you into the playoffs, maybe a deep run into the into the playoffs. And Joe Flacco is is an emergency guy. You know why I'm laughing over here? Because uh, as you're talking, I'm laughing. But it, 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 I was thinking about. <laughs> I said, I said the re- the real reason why they signed Joe Flacco is because uh, Stefanski and Barry and everybody watched a couple of those runs <laughs> and they saw DTR trying to uh, challenge uh, some of those guys. And they said, man, yep. it, it, with 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 a run like that i don't know if he's gonna stick around a long time J- uh, jt you know. tell us about uh montrose what's what's going on uh montrose hey we've been in business for uh 40 plus years now uh headquartered at our ford store in fairlawn ohio we've got uh a land rover jag volvo store right in brook park um we also have a chevy uh gmc and cjdr out in ashtabula a kia store in lorraine county and uh buick GMC Nissan in Hermitage, Pennsylvania, and you can see all of our stores at GoMontrose.com. Awesome. Any good deals going on? Uh, I'll tell you what. They're at Nissan. They've got a couple sign and drives they just came out with for uh, Thanksgiving, Black Friday, Kia as well. So you can get some new vehicles uh, under three hundred bucks with limited to there's no money down. It's actually go to the website, check it out. Sweet, JT. Always great to have you. Thanks, Thanks. for our game reaction. Love and being here. We'll be back with some big play bets after this. <laughs> Welcome back to the Hanford Dixon show with this goofball. I want to do my shake. Okay. Come on. You mean our shake. Well, that's what I meant. Our shake. Victory Monday, baby. Give us a bark. Boop, boop, boop. I like yeah, that. I like that. There we go. Shut up, King. Shut up, King. You put a little s- a spice <laughs> in that with, with the bark at it. Welcome back to the Hanford Dixon show. The top dog. I'm Gabriella Cruz. We're joined by Frank Stams and the King. Greg Pruitt is also with us virtually. Always a good time with you fellas. Let's let's look ahead. Should we look yeah, ahead? Yeah, yeah. That know, big got, game coming up. Big, we're going to Denver playing the Broncos. They're five and five. And let's see, I think they've won the last they're four in a row. They've won four coming into this game. Russell Wilson has looked a lot better. I know he was kind of getting ripped apart on Twitter beginning of the season, but um he's he's been doing pretty good. What kinds of challenges do you think Russell Wilson present for this Browns defense? You want to take it, Frank, or you want me yeah, to jump sure, in? Yeah, sure, I'll Go jump ahead. in. Well, I mean, he won. He's, you know, he's a, a talented quarterback. And, you know, playing well. Uh, and, and he's playing well. And, and that's the thing. I mean, when you look at teams in the NFL, and, and that's what scares me the most is the momentum, uh, the wins that they're putting together. Teams, you know, we when we evaluated film, and, and, and Greg and, and, and Hanford know this, is, you know, you'd look at the previous three games that they would play. You really don't want to go too far back because teams become different teams. And I think this is a different team than the 70 spot that the Dolphins put on, put on them in week one. And they're playing well, and they've got a quality coach in Sean Payton, and they're going to be at home. And Denver, hold, you hold, better be in hold, shape. Hold, hold, hold that thought. You talked about it, the 70 they put on, put on them. But training camp and all that stuff is different now than what it used to be. I mean, it's totally, totally different, and and they're not ready to play. I don't think early in the year. No, they definitely no. The players in, in general aren't ready to play, and that's I think to me that puts a, a, a more of a premium on coaches to find a way because this is a brave new world that we're experiencing over the last five or six, seven years in the NFL. Is how do you get your team ready to play? Practices are limited. The amount of contact is limited. You know what, what you can do with players is limited. So you know it's it's kind of a an ex, you know a, a, a work in progress. So. Uh, but Sean Payton, they've figured it out now, and they're winning. They, they won you know, uh, a big game, come from behind, showed a lot of character, a lot of resiliency last night to win. So this is going to be a tough game uh, that the Browns have uh, in Mile High. And as you and Greg uh, both know, it, it's, that's a tough place to play. I mean, you better be in shape. I was going to say, how about the altitude? I think as fans, we always hear about that. I know as a runner, I'm very familiar with a lot of people train at altitude to build their red blood cells and everything. You do. you got to be in shape. What's it actually like playing? I don't know what the actual temperature is going to be, but it's worse when it's hot and you play in Denver. Well, but I don't know about if it's going to, if it's cool, if it's, but it is a difference. That's just the area is thinner. I don't think it's I don't it's like Greg said it's not the temperature you you're, you you start your mouth starts to get dry yeah. uh, earlier you you notice that in in warmups but the thing that they have going for them is they they're really well I, I don't think it they've talked about you've got to be out there 
to acclimate to that environment? What do you have to be out there? I don't know if it affects you, you know, if you're only there for 48 hours or I don't really know the science behind it. I just know how you feel as a player playing out there and you kind of, you, 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 you kind of dry up a little bit real fast. Well, not only was they giving um, Russell Wilson a hard time, they was giving uh, Sean Payton a hard time because uh, obviously you guys know the story where Sean Payton came out on one of the other coaches and he said when he got oh, to, right. when he got to Denver, right. this place was a yeah, mess. I right. mean, he just said it. And, and, and that was uh, – Yeah, our Joe, guy. Yeah, yeah the, cat, the the quarterback that got hurt. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? From Green Bay. And they came down on him hard he for hard. criticizing – Hard. Right. Yeah, he was only talking. He was only speaking the truth. Yeah, but yeah. you know, you know, Sean Payton. He was in New Orleans, and uh, he's just saying it uh, like it is. But Greg, real quick, uh, Frank talked about the training camp, totally yeah. different than when you came up. Also, well, yes, yeah, it, it was completely different. Uh, uh, they really didn't care anything about the, whether we fell out. Or, Whatever. I think, <laughs> I think we were, we were and they the still don't. Right. Yeah. We, right. we, we were the reason that they changed a lot of the things Rules and, the yeah. for, for the players. Yeah. We were the experiment. If anybody was being experimented right, on, right? right. Yeah. I mean, and we don't. Want, and, and I agree with you. We don't want to call them soft today. But I mean, guys, come on. No, you we're just. We sound angry. It's only because we're jealous. Yeah. And, yeah. And they, you can't do anything to them. They can't play. You can't touch the quarterback. You can't hit a guy. You can't look right. at a guy hard today. Right. If you do, you got to get right. a penalty. It's the most no, ridiculous I, thing I, I've I, ever heard. I, of. I heard they were investigating the Falcons because the quarterback down there said he ha was experiencing headaches and he feel felt a little weird. <laughs> I was like, well, well what? 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 That? That's something that's not normal. Hey, hey man, if that's the case, we, right? We, we, like, we, wow. we should have a lawsuit or something. <laughs> if that was the case, oh my god! I was gonna say, I never will forget. I hit someone and I ended up on the wrong bench. Yeah, I thought I was on our bench, but I was on their bench. I mean, man, come on! It's totally, totally. Totally, totally different today, Gabby. <laughs> Hanford, what do you guys think? Over under 36 total points for, for this game. we got to sneak in a bet for our sponsors here. Broncos are 21.7 points per game, allowing 26.8. Browns, 22.7 per game and allowing 18. What do you think this game is going to be over under 36 points? What do you think, Frank? What do you I think? like Denver. And listen, I'm rooting. You know, nobody. I grew up in Akron. <laughs> I've been a Browns fan my whole life. I'm rooting. But if you're going to put money on it, <laughs> and I still see the Browns making the playoffs, uh, right. you, I, you know, you got to put your money on Denver. I think this is, is going to be a big challenge for the young quarterback, and I like the under in it. Well, okay. you know, that's surprising because Frank is always has a philosophy. Pick, do the over. Always do the over. You can't right. go wrong. Yeah. You're, you're, you're always in it. Yeah, yeah there's always hope yeah. if you got the over. Right. Bet the over. <laughs> okay, we're well, running out of time because you fellas are, are talking. I'm going to say uh, the Browns, and I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. Okay, he's going under on this one, too. Okay, gang. Well, that wraps up this segment. We're going to just do our, our last final couple minutes when we come back right after this. Thanks for watching the Hanford Dixon show. We are wrapping up today on this Victory Monday. Hanford, we had some really cool guests. We we really did, and I just want to uh, just we want to say thank you to uh, Frank and uh, Greg for coming on and and, and joining us here. And uh, guys, again, uh, your thoughts on this game, real quick. Now we don't have all day, Frank. Yeah, you know it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be a tough game. What it's do you think, Greg? I still say the Browns, and because it's on the road, it's going to be tough because of the experience of the quarterback. But Flacco is a big deal this week to help that quarterback. I like it. I like it. And I'm going to say the Browns, too. And I'm going to go with the over. I think that's what's going to happen. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. Forget we'll, it. We'll get it. We'll get it together. <laughs> we'll get it together. No, we got to get our stuff together. Thank you, guys. You're looking great in your orange. Let's get that next Browns dub. Thanks so much for watching the Hanford Dixon Show. Ha 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 ha!